Hi, and welcome to The Gateway. Thank you for joining me again this month. Good on you for continuing to improve yourself and for continuing to look for new ways to be more effective, more potent, and more successful in your life. Now, you're gonna see I'm outside and it's a bit chilly. It's a winter's morning, but it's a beautiful day. So I thought I'd share today's Gateway video with you in my front garden. So you're gonna hear dogs barking, you're gonna hear lots of noises, but I reckon it's all part of just being outside and getting in and amongst life. So let's have a look at what we wanna to talk to you about on the Gateway today. Now here's what I know and what we've gone through on the Gateway for the last four years. And by the way, if you haven't got your hands on the last two years worth of videos, you're really missing out. So on your emails, there's a link where you can go in and actually purchase all the last two years worth of Gateway videos because we're not actually recovering old ground. We're always moving forward and always moving on with new content and new information. So if you don't have your hands on that yet, now's a good time to go and have a look at it. What we're going to cover today is looking at you in the entirety of your life, looking at everything that you go through. You know, on the Gateway, we work with a lot of the things that go wrong in our lives and we work with a lot of ways that we can try to be more creative and get what we really want out of life. So today, what I want to share with you is a way that you can really go inside, really start to understand what it is that you want, how you want what you want, how you can get what you want, how you can create what you want, and know that you are actually more than what you think you are. Because here's, here's, here's one of the reasons why I thought this was super important that we cover this material today. Over the last month, while I've been working on this material so that I could make sure that what I give to you works, I've also had cause to meet with a whole bunch of people around Australia, in Perth and Toowoomba and Sydney and Melbourne, all over Australia. And I've even had some conversations with some people in Canada about this context. And what I've found is that as you know, people, instinctively, what we do is we ride these roller coasters where sometimes life is just awesome and sometimes life is not, sometimes life is challenging. And you know, we've had this conversation on the Gateway already about how life is like a roller coaster. But what tends to happen is when things are going really well, we feel like it's gonna last forever on one hand, or worse, on the other hand, we run around thinking, oh well, you know, it's just a bubble and it's gonna burst sometime. You know, things don't always go well for everybody all the time, so I'm just gonna, you know, lap it up while it's working. So that's what tends to happen when things are going really well. When things are going really badly in our lives, we look at it and we go, oh, it's always like this, this always happens to me, this is always my life's journey, and I never get to have any peace or I never get success for a long period of time, and I'll never have that peace and freedom and great wealth and great health, I'll ne that'll never happen to me. And we think it's gonna last forever, the down times. Or worse, we think, it's all my fault, I'm a mess up, I'm a muck up, I'm not good enough, and that's why my life always goes through this sort of crap. So we have a belief system around both ways of being and both functional ways of being in the world. But I want you to question something with me. I want you to notice something. Notice that throughout the course of your life, whether it's good or it's bad, you've actually got no control over the challenges that show up in your life. You've got no control over the fact that your relationship might come to an end, your business might go in, into bankruptcy, you might get blown up, you might have somebody in your life pass away, you might have a relationship come to an end, you might have um, some other adversity that takes place in your life and you actually don't have control as to what that's going to be and when that's going to be. Have you noticed? And on the flip side, you also don't have control over the opportunities that show up in your life, what the opportunities are and the timing of them and the degree of success that that opportunity is gonna to bring to you. You don't have a control over that either. I mean, you may have control over participating in a certain opportunity. You might have participated in bringing it to fruition, but you never control when it shows up, the extent to which it shows up and the, ex the success that it's gonna bring. You got no say over that but we live our lives like we do. But you know the thing that I think is really interesting about what I just explained there is that what that actually means is that there is something else participating with you, right alongside you in your life, and it's been doing it all along. 
there's been something else unfolding your life day after day and it's been happening all along. You never had full control because this other grander force or grander power has been participating in your life with you. You never had full control. All you were expected to do and are expected to do is show up on the day, 100%. Because here's the thing, we exist in a, in a universe that requires 100% participation in order for us to get what we want. And you are here to get what you want. But when you're running around thinking you're not good enough, you'll never make it, it's never gonna happen for you, you're never gonna have that level of success, life is just always like this for you, or it's just a bubble of wonderment right now, but the bubble's always gonna burst because it does, that's how my life looks. When you're running around participating in life like that, I reckon if we were to put a figure on it, you're showing up 50% capacity. You're not participating in life fully and you're not showing up 100% ready to embrace and to participate in whatever is coming your way. So in sharing that little insight with you, and I've spoken with a handful of people, as I said, around Australia and also in um, the States, what I've come to understand is that we are so much more than what we believe we are. And when we acknowledge that, and when we can see that we are way more than what we think we are, and we are not alone, we actually never have been. Because if you look back on your life, even though you've been so preoccupied with the future and so preoccupied with the past, the present has just continued to unfold on its own without you even noticing it because you're so busy somewhere else. The present continues to unfold. You wake up in the morning, you live through your day, you go to bed. You wake up in the morning, you live through your day, you go to bed. And the present continues to unfold in spite of you. What if? What if we were to acknowledge that there is another force at play that participates in all of our lives, every single one of us, there's another force at play that's determining our challenges, that's determining our opportunities, and that's having our days unfold moment by moment. And we are either there sometimes in the present moment, or we're off worrying about the past or worrying about the future. You know you do it. But that grander force is still having your life unfold on a day-to-day -day basis. What if we were to acknowledge that grander force? What if we were to become intimately connected to it? What if we were to try to understand it? What if we were, try, we, we were to become present to it and to become intimate with it, connect with it, work with it, participate with it? What could then become possible? When you actually wake up and start realizing that during the day, and you know, our lives is just a series of day-to-day -day moments, right? So if you were to wake up in the morning and you were to realize that there's a part of you that woke up with you and it's your awareness, that awareness goes to sleep when you go to sleep and it wakes up when you wake up. You know that you're aware, you know that you're alive, you know that you're breathing, you know that you're speaking and you can hear yourself talking. There's a part of you that's doing the listening. What if you would actually just pay attention to that part of you? What if you would actually acknowledge that that part of you exists? What if you were to acknowledge that that part of you, that's your awareness, is the grand part of you that's participating with you all along? What if you just flirted with that? What if you were just to say, well, here's me with all of my opinions, all of my likes and my hates and my grumps and my gripes and my dreams and my desires and my wishes. He, he, that, that's me. That's the conscious me, the, the, the part of me that I know is here that gets frustrated and gets irritated and feels down and feels excited, that goes through that whole raft of emotions constantly. What if you were to acknowledge that part of you but then to acknowledge another part of you that is quiet, that actually doesn't have anything to say. And you know that that part of you exists because when you talk to yourself, you know how you talk to yourself? We all do. When you talk to yourself, who's listening? What part of you is listening? And what part of you is the part of you that makes a decision about that self-talk 
that then allows you to get into action and go and drive a car or go and open up a business. You have conversations with yourselves, you have you weigh up the pros and the cons and you make decisions, but what part of you is actually the part of you that says, yes, that's a good decision, or yes, that feels right, or yes, that's in line with myself, or that feels like something I could powerfully do. There's a part of you that actually is in tune with your greatest good, and it's your awareness. It's the part that, you know, when you go to sleep, you go to sleep and when you wake up in the morning all of a sudden you're there and you start thinking what part of you is actually doing the thinking we know it's your brain from a physical perspective but when we cut your brain open it's just a piece of gray matter so what's driving the brain what's driving your desires where do your desires come from because one minute they're there and one minute they're not right they come from nowhere to now here. How does that work? How do you get an idea? How is it that a thought just pops into your head from out of nowhere to now here? And then you'll analyze that thought, you'll go through that thought, and then you'll go and take action on it. Hopefully you're starting to get a gist of what I'm trying to get you to pay attention to or to even recognize that it's there. There is an awareness that exists inside of you that is permanent, unchanging, resolute, without opinion, without desire, but only pure connectedness to your greatest good. And that part of you goes to sleep when you go to sleep and wakes up with you when you wake up. But because you don't pay attention to it, you think you're on your own out there making a bunch of decisions. It's not true. And you think that you're on your own being subjected to everything that goes on in life. It's not true. There is an awareness inside of you that is greater than you. The way that I do it is I, the way that I get in touch with that awareness is I'll say to myself, okay, so here I am having a conversation with myself. I'm talking to myself about what I'm gonna make for dinner, what I wanna do for the business, my holidays, my dogs. You know, we have conversations with ourselves who's doing the listening and it's almost like I get stopped in my tracks because I think it's, it's kind of like a noodle baking question because you go well I'm doing the listening no I'm doing the talking who's listening what part of me is listening because part of me is talking part of me is listening and evaluating and aligning for my greatest good Another, another way in, another access point for what I'm talking about. You know how uh, most of us, we think about, um, think about your greatest dream. Okay, so for me, it's having a show just like Oprah Winfrey, right? So think about your greatest dream. What's your greatest dream? The one that scares the bazookas out of you. What's that dream? And whatever that dream is, generally that dream will instill a sense of passion and desire and connectedness, but at the same time, it will instill a fear and a terror and a, and a, a lack of self-belief that I could never do that, that could never be me, I would never be that successful, no one would listen to what I've got to say, how could that ever happen? So there's a part of you that's a shadow aspect of you that has the negative beliefs, but then there's a part of you that always knows that actually, you are better than you think you are. You are more than you think you are. There is a part of you that actually knows that. There's a part of you that knows you're more. You can't run away from it and you can't pretend that it's not there because it is. The only reason that we know that that's true is because we will attempt to create more for ourselves. We'll attempt to make our businesses more successful. We'll attempt to have better relationships. We'll attempt to, we'll go, we will go outside our comfort zone. Yeah, it might scare the bajinkas out of us, but we will actually go outside of our comfort zone because instinctively we know we actually can. And that sits very much on an unconscious level, as does the I'm not good enough belief. So both live on an unconscious level. But the, the, the part that I'm trying to get you in touch with is the part of you that does actually know that you are more the part of you that doesn't have any fear, the part of you that 
just actually knows you are capable of it. You're capable of that grandest dream. You're capable of fulfilling that grandest desire. Because here's the interesting thing about life and who we are as humans. We have never been in pursuit of something that was unachievable. Never in the history of man. We have never pursued something that was unachievable. We've never asked a question that didn't have an answer. We may not have it at the time. We may have to go searching for it and we may have to do some work, but the answer is always there. So we never go in pursuit of a desire that's not achievable for you. You never ask a question that you can't find an answer for. You might have some work to do and you may have to do some research, but you're it's in the history of mankind. So you would never get a desire. You would never get an inclination. You would never have an idea that you were incapable of fulfilling. So let's just analyze that for a quick second. Where did that idea come from? Where did that desire came from? It came from nowhere and it landed in between your two ears. Now that coming from nowhere, what if that nowhere is that awareness? That nowhere is that awareness inside of you that's been participating with you in your life all along. Consider that for a second. Where your ideas come from and your, your inspirations and your desires, it is no mistake and it's not actually coming from nowhere. It's coming from somewhere and from some, some great force that's participating with you in your life that says, I'll take that idea, thanks, because we are capable of that. I'll take that inspiration, thanks, because we can fulfill it. I'll take that desire and I'll take that inclination, thanks, and we will fulfill that, me and this grander force. That's really, you know, there's a, there's a whole world of possibility around what becomes available to you when you actually get that your ideas don't just come from nowhere. Your experiences, your opportunities, your challenges, your inclinations, your desires, they don't come from nowhere. They come from that grander force, that awareness, that, that part of you that's permanent and unchanging, that wakes up with you when you wake up and for that first millisecond is blank. And then you go in search of ideas and thoughts and then of course your day continues to roll on filled with thoughts. But who's choosing the thoughts for you? Who's choosing the desires for you? Who's choosing the inclinations? What is choosing the inclinations? What is choosing the desires? What is choosing the thoughts? There is a part of you that's doing that. And our job is to get into bed with that part of us and to connect to that part of us. So here's how I do it. I have a cute little book and I have probably got four or five of these that sit next to my book, my bed every night and I've got a pen there as well now what I do this is what's called my morning pages now I've mentioned this before and I'm going to mention it again if you haven't already got this book it's called the artist's way by Julia Cameron now she talks about you know artists and how artists can get creative but what she's also got in there are real lessons for life she does make reference to God so if that offends you then you know just try and put that aside but the actual message of the book and the, um, the ideas and the contexts in there are just brilliant. And I've taken two ideas out of her book which have been life-changing for me. And the first one is Morning Pages, where I fill three pages every morning of whatever is in my head. I wake up and I get in touch with that aware part of myself. I don't even get out of bed. You're not allowed to get out of bed, actually. You have to stay in bed until you've written your three pages. So I'll get up, I'll stay in bed, I'll reach for my book and I'll reach for my pen and I will just empty out my head. I will get in touch with that awareness and I'll start to become grateful for the awareness and what the awareness did for me yesterday. The decisions that I made yesterday that really worked the choices that I made, the ideas that I got, the thoughts that I had that really worked. I'll start to get in touch with that awareness and become grateful for it. And you know, it's a sensation. It's a physical sensation that you get where you start to, you start to see that or you start to feel connected to the part of you that actually knows you're amazing. There's a part of you that knows that you're really good and really extraordinary. 
And when you're lying in bed doing your morning pages, every morning, you start to get in touch and connected to that part of yourself. Because ideally, what you want to try to do is spend more and more time in that state, in that condition of aware of your awareness, of connectedness to the grander force inside of you that's playing out your life and has been all along. Getting connected and, and, and being aligned with that part of you is actually the most powerful, the most potent, and the most free place you can possibly be. Because when you, when you write your morning pages where you empty out all of your thoughts, you talk about everything that you're thinking about, and sometimes you might not have anything that you're thinking about first thing in the morning. You just write whatever's there, and even if there's nothing there, you write, I got nothing, I got nothing, I got nothing for three pages. But then eventually what will happen is you will connect into the awareness where you write, you might write, who's writing these words? You might write, who's doing the thinking? What part of me is choosing my thoughts? You might ask some questions and write those questions on your morning pages. And as you write those questions, I want you to do yourself a favor, take the morning pages to the next step. And this is what I was just saying a second ago. As you're writing, start to associate into a sense of gratefulness and connectedness that you're actually capable of thinking that you are capable of actually having a thought and then having a hand that can write down the thought become grateful for the ability and the awareness to be able to do that start to get grateful that you have an awareness that you're alive that you can hear yourself speaking that you can hear yourself thinking Become connected to that awareness of what's going on and you'll feel a warm, comforting sensation. It's physical. You'll feel a warm, comforting sensation. And then from there, you want to savor that and you want to experience that feeling as much as you possibly can. Remind yourself throughout the course of the day, over and over and over again, as often as you possibly can, so that you start to become familiar with this other way of being. You know, when you're, you put little reminders around the house, little, little um, notes for yourself, wear an wear a anchor ring, put little reminders to trigger yourself to go back to remembering, oh, hang on, I'm aware that I'm alive. I'm aware that I'm aware. Oh, what does that feel like? What part of me is aware? Oh, and all of a sudden you kind of just go into this rabbit hole where there's just nothingness. And it's that, it's that sensation that kind of disconnects you from all the attachment that you have to everything. And it allows you to kind of see life from an observer's perspective. And if you saw the, um, the webinar that, that I did, the last uh, mind, uh, what am I trying to say? If you saw the webinar that I did on the last mastermind conference call, we were talking about having a different perspective. Now, really, one of the reasons I wanted to share this video with you today was to show you that this awareness is the other perspective. When you recognize and when you, when you start to understand, or, or not even that, it's when you start to connect to what that feeling feels like. When you start to understand what awareness actually feels like. It's, a, it, it's disconnected from all the things that you're attached to, but it's still very connected to life people, relationships, love, the things that are important are still very connected to that. But you can see it from another perspective. It's like you get to see the whole picture because you're not so connected to having a specific outcome or a result that you determined, you know, last week or last month as to what you wanted to achieve. So do yourself a favor. Try to, try to immerse yourself in questioning. Who's doing the listening? Who am I? And don't find an answer that says you are a beautician or you are a naturopath. That's not the answer. In fact, there isn't an answer. When you ask the question of who am I, the, the only thing you want to get is a feeling. A feeling of I am more. I am more. I am more than what I think I am. Because there's been something participating with me all along that is far more forceful than what I am.
and I want to get to know that part of me. I want to get intimate with that part of me. When you start asking those questions and you follow the instructions that I've given you on this video as a start, you're going to start to get a taste of something in your life that is very freeing and um, very liberating. So give it a try. And you know what? Please post all of your comments on Facebook because I'm really expecting this one to be a little bit challenging. It's interesting actually, I, I've, I've, been, I've been standing here delivering the video for you, but what I've found is that it's almost like I'm trying to give something an explanation that can't be explained. I'm trying to give words to something that language is limited um, in terms of explaining. It's a real sensation. It's a real sense of connectivity and love and association with all that is around you that's all of life and it's your awareness and if you can just kind of try and get this from the video or get that from the video then you're really on the right track otherwise go back and have a look at the webinar that I did um, the last webinar for the uh, the mindset the mindset call I'm just trying to think of what the name of the webinar was actually um, it was just it was all about perspectives so go back onto your membership pages and have a look at that webinar as well and that's going to give you some more insights also so enjoy, play with that this month. Write out your morning pages. Pay real attention to doing your morning pages and getting that sense of gratitude. Don't let yourself off the hook. I've let myself off the hook a couple of times on my morning pages, but gee, I know it when I do. So before you get out of bed, fill up three pages of everything that's going on in your head and then start to get grateful for the fact that you are actually capable of writing, you're capable of existing, and perhaps you're purposeful too. Start to get grateful for that and that'll put you in touch with that sense of awareness really quickly. Enjoy. All my love. I'll see you in the next gateway. Bye for now.